This here is a 1982 Chevrolet Custom Deluxe. A. I bought it on the interwebs, sight unseen, of course. It's being sold as a parts truck. See, I need this box and the doors for my 81 GMC flavor. But then a guy got to thinking, you know, it's only been sitting 15, 16 years. I wonder if a guy could just get this fired up and just scoot it home. Well, I've got some junk tools and a handful of parts, so I guess we're fixing to find out. Welcome to Vice Grip Garage. Snag this off a good old boy here. I'm in northwestern Tennessee, I guess is what you'd call it. He bought it for the same reason. The body on this thing, well, I mean, I'm looking at it for the first time, but, you know, don't seem to be that weight reduced. And that's why he snagged on it. But he just can't get his wind anymore, you know, so he's starting to let projects go. Is that a peacock? Yep. So he listed her as a parts truck and I sniffed it up. It's like I say, I need some body panels for my blue truck, the Ford W shop truck. He said it could have a six banger in it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Didn't ask questions. He doesn't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. Let's just walk around this thing, you know, drink it up a little bit, see what we could figure out, what kind of a mess we're in. I don't even know what's under the hood or appears to be an automatic. Okay. That's neat. See what we got. Be some real nice hay. Usually I like to start in the rear of the vehicle. You know, the eight foot bed, they don't have to be made or potentially the boot, you know, for working on a car. It tells you so much about the rig. What do we got? We got intake gaskets. We got head gaskets. We got a charger whirler, water pump, I don't know. But it kind of prepares you mentally for about what's to go down on the front. Back here though, I could tell you right here and now, we got a bunch of faded Coca-Cola cans from two decades ago, some takeout food rotting with maggots and an air cleaner. The rest of this stuff I brought. My wife dropped me off this morning. We just backed that truck in right here and just shoveled it all into this truck. You know, my Yamaha R1s is getting, they're getting worn out. So why do the lifting up and down and six times? We just push it into here. We got all sorts of good stuff. Fix a flat, transmission rebuild kit, you know. Anywho, let me show you this box. It is mind bottling and I ain't kidding you. First of all, well, last of all, we'll get to the exterior. But just get in here and look. Look at his wheel wells. This ain't hauled nothing in its life. Look at this thing. Zero rust. I can't believe it, but I guess I got to. I'm looking at it. That's the original caulking in there. Look at this. Oh yeah. This tells me we got a one barra or a two barra. Oh no. Yep, that's the two barra. We'll get to that in a minute. Shoot, that's not good. But anywho, look at this. Nothing's got bent up. A four-wheeler hasn't hit this on a panic brake and bent this all the pieces. There's been no farm implements in here. No rust. By the who's and ways, someone cared about this rig. Threw it up a mat on here. Protect on her, see? That did good, sure. But this bed, I ain't kidding you. This is too bad, but we can fix that with some zzzz. 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 Look at that. Ignore the maggots and stuff like that. What is this, by the way? Juice, oh. Juice pouch. Juice pouch of some kind. And I think that's macaroni or something. 
Whew. She's got some smell on her. See this door. Real solid. That's a going to town unit. Let's jump in and see what we got here. I don't know yet. It's blue. We got blue interiors. <sighs> Whoa. It's like the inside of a raisin brand box of mosquito spray. It's really, it's really odd actually. Why is that happening? Huh, I'll get you in here. It's not bad, if I'm being honest. See, the custom Deluxe was not Deluxe at all. Just very basic, basic vinyl seat. We got webs in here, webbage. Was an AC truck, all be dipped. That option's been deleted on, I'll see. Nothing there. AM, FM, tape player. Okay, I like that a lot. Oh, we got a Nishin stickage. That's neat. It's even the right one. Ain't got no battery. We got uh, oil pieces light, charging word of light, WP. MPH is 72864. New. I'm going to say it's definitely 172. By the who and way, this is either manual brakes or it's been converted from a, you know, bolt action to an auto magic flavor. But this looks but this looks original here. Although, it doesn't have the pointer, but the spring of the wire could be busted. So it's either manual brakes or it was a manual at some point in time. But this is really it. I mean, there's not, there's not a lot going on here. Catalytic converters. Oh yeah, we're in the 80s, fellers. At least she was made in the US of A. Cab is in really good shape. I actually need that buckle on the winder too. There's a lot of good parts in this truck. Guy was not kidding. Look at the door handles. Look at that. I mean, she don't really roll, but look at this thing. <whistles> Snazzy. I've confirmed this side is where the smell is coming from. I think it's, oh yeah, see all this is wet. Anyway, custom deluxe. What have we got in here? What have we got? Okay, well, I guess that opens up pretty good. Let's see here. Front stabilizer, 4.1 litre, inline six. <sighs> we'll take it. Power steering, all right, we're back. Solid paint, highway fog lights, auto magical transmission, so then this is a real basic work truck, probably had a rubber floor. So we've got manual brakes, 4.1 liter, six banger, but it had AC. I just, help me understand that one. You probably won't be able to. Fan motor looks pretty good. will be dipped. I mean, the dash has got a little bit of wear on her. You know, we might be able to bring in some carpet lay over this. Can't even really tell. Speakulators is gone. Why would you take the speakulator but leave the cassette player? I don't know the answer to that one either. Well, there's the, what is this? I don't know. Well, here's the boom boom. So, okay, we're back. We might have a tape player yet. These ain't quite Warren G's. Sparkomatic. <laughs> be dipped. Did I already work on this truck? I must have at some point. And it was double taped to the floor. That's approved. Look at this cab though. I just, I ain't seen something like this in a long time, fellers. Nice old hay barn back there, but anywho, let's swig in this body. The panels on this thing are, they're good. They're real good. Look at this front fender. Are you looking at it? I mean, solid. Tiny bit of surface rust down there. Got just, you know, she's tickled on in here. Well, we could bring that around. That's a four second patch with some foam and 
aluminum tape, but this box, goodness gracious. I bought this truck for the price of one box side that you can get through AMD or whoever else. And I got two of them, fellers. There's a little bit of a ding right here, but can a guy just get some Bondo on there? I think he can. Maybe a little bit of warpage. She got bounced up there. But we'll bring that around. Is that a tailpipe? We'll pretend we didn't see that. Tailgate's in good shape. You'll just have to believe me. What is this? Made in Canada, 73. Well, that's a Canadian 73 light, but it's an 82. Oh, well, let's take a look here. I'll be dipped. Made in Canada. So this is a Canadian truck. And the light was replaced with a Canadian 73, even though she's an 82. What have we got over here? Well, that's a repop. Look at that thing. Different, you can tell because it's just the way that it is. This one says 78. But that's definitely like a LMC or something like that. But any hoose, bedage. Yeah, she's got a dent there. Probably on account of this. Okay, it's got a little bit of a wobble in it. No big deal. No rust around there. Custom wheel. She's chromed out, you know. Got just a... We can get some body filler in there. But man, this body line here. Snap a string down that, I dare you. This door is shot, but I think my drinker side door on the 81 is fairly decent. We got an extra set of door handles. Another front fender, small dent here, but it ain't bad. It ain't bad at all. Real still intact, if I remember right. Yeah, look at that. Looking pretty good. Hood needs a little bit of, you know, cleaning. Here and who. Was blue, so that's been a replacement hood for some reason. Look at the windscreen in this. Brand new. There's parts for days. I bet you these wipers is probably even good. Nope, they're rotten. But we'll say they're decent anyway, you know. Well. Let's get into the baked potatoes here, loaded. I mean, maybe you like mashed, I don't know. But let's see what's under the power barn at this point. <laughs> oh. Well, I probably should have got here earlier in the day, you know. We got an engine, but why everything everything's in everything's in hooked. What is this the rad? I just <sighs> great. Well, this is definitely the four one six in a row ready to tow. And the best I could figure is a feller was getting ready to pull this thing out. Or we legitimately legitimately have a parts truck because things is missing you know and everything in here is unhooked I just there's some labels on some scotch tape what was the guy doing I don't know we got chain pieces broken off bolts giant spiders there's chain this is perfect we got throttle edge unhooked Kick downs, PS unhooked, rads unhooked, all the vacuum irons. Why'd you cut all of them, feller? This stuff, I don't know what that does. All the digitals unplugged. They even, why did you, you took the, you took the sad cable off. Oh, there ain't even a motor bolt over here. Or over here. Great. Exhaust is torched off. I mean, they were literally minutes, and I mean minutes, away from pulling this engine out is what I'm gathering here, looking at this. 
Unfortunately, this looks like the 2SE fuel make it happener. They are stubborn little devils, and let me tell you something about a thing or two. They're stubborn. And you can find them on the V6 Camaras in the 80s, whenever the smog stuff came around. And, well, they're junk. And I tell you right now, I ain't going to be able to find a rebuild kit for that. So, whatever this is, is going to be what it is. I got the charging wordler on hook. We got a ton of work to do here. That's not even the right rad. They even had the chain already hooked up. I mean, literally, tractor. All I had to do was take the hood off and they were ready to yank this thing out. I wonder if the transmission is even. Well, the shift machine is still in there, but I wonder if the cross member is bolted in or if it even has a drive shaft. I could count how many people are in a gymnasium the amount of times I've worked on one of these. It's not a lot. And uh, I had forgotten there ain't no crankulator bolt on the old crankulator torque twister. So I got a croissant wrench up on the charging whirler. We're going to bang on the old guitar string here. See if we can whirl this thing over. I, I don't know. About to find out. You know, the wife's got to pick up kids from school. So this is my ride home. That's what I'm trying to tell you, fellers. Otherwise, it's a thumb to the motel. Let's just hope, you know, something happens here, is what I'm saying. Oh, the fan is... fan belt is just a flexing on me. Well, what in the devil? Let me regroup. Oh, it moved like an eighth of an inch. There it goes. Backwards. Stuck again. It's got a weird sticky point, but that might be where it's starting to build compression. The belts is a flopping, is what I'm trying to tell you. And I ain't getting the leverage I need. I got a chain in the way. Nothing's on the front end of this thing. I ain't got no battery. I mean, I don't like doing it this way, but maybe we throw a battery in this thing and just twirl on the key and see if we can either jam the starter into the flex plate and blow that into pieces or if something's bound up maybe we can blow it through the block you know and uh third most are good wrist maybe it just you know rolls up it just rolls over all the way taking some risks this time fellas we got the time i don't have a watch but the time is amongst us it's against us why are there so many vacuum lines hello is there anybody in there? Broncos are back and they are really hot right now. And that's certainly the case for the Ford Bronco that Omaze is giving away. And you can enter for your chance to win just by going to amaze.com forward slash vice grip. This Bronco has clearly just went through a frame off restoration and it looks like every nut and bolt on this thing was gone through. Just listen to this list of upgrades on this thing. 17 inch pacer wheels with BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, velocity exhaust system, two and a half inch lift, Dana 44 with the four nine inch out back there. Wheelwood four wheel disc brakes with hydro boost assisted braking. Got LED headlights, power side steps, velocity door handles, knobs and mirrors. It's got the Bluetooth radios in there with the boom booms and the subwoofers, vintage air and heat. It don't matter where you live. You got I don't think you could fit more, th you know, accessorize into this rig. Honestly, it's loaded. Your donation there will support the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. And once again, to enter for your chance to win the Velocity Ford Bronco, just go to amaze.com forward slash vice grip. Very specific reason I brought this battery. I got it on sale and I already had it. It's super starts. Also, most of all, it's got the go handle. The convenience, it's there. Throw this puppy in. Oh, that's. Group 75, probably way too small. I guess we're gonna find out. Oddly enough, the the red is the red. And the negative is unhooked. It is confusion. Normally I just have a bunch of red. We just gotta hook this up, you know, somewhere on the engine here. Let me figure out 
whatever is the easiest because I'm lazy. And uh, oh, maybe down here on the AC bracket tray, since uh, that's all removed basically. I already got my cheater bolts installed because I never have the right, you know, accessorize for these particular cables. Okay, mm -hmm. yep. Oh, the guy's got the lightning cube hooked up in here. And since I feel like in my hip bones and probably in my left shin, we're gonna be here till zero dark 30. Went ahead and just hooked up the Lone Wolf 6000. It's gonna save a lot of trips back and forth. Here we go. Doesn't sound good. You hear how it's galloping twice? We got two cylinders. Oh, wait a second. What do we got over here? Oh, it's actually pumping fuel. <laughs> oh, be dipped. Now maybe we just put a filt tray in there and see how rusty it is. I don't know. It doesn't smell good though. The reason it caught my attention is I thought someone was staining a deck around here. No, nope. it was definitely the fuel, but we'll pretend that it's good, is what I'm saying. But anywho, I digress. Back to the gallop. We got uneven compression going on through this rig. But out of the six, what do we need? Four? You need 50 horsepower to cruise 55 miles an hour at 3,648 pounds. So all we need is four of these lighting off fires, right? Yep. Okay, so this works. That could potentially start it. Now we got to move on to lightning. Are we getting sparkles? You know, compression, we already know that's down. We just need enough to make a fire. But let's move on to sparkles. We got a HEI in here. Ah, hi energy ignition you know what i mean this is that fuel splash shooting right out of here see they just snipped it which i don't know why they did that because the fuel pump make it happener is connected to the engine the same way that the fuel make it happener is but anywho it just saved us a slice because we're probably going to put a fill tray in there at some point anyway and now we know that the mechanical fuel pump works that's neat I didn't even look before we started turtling on her, if I'm being honest. Normally I disconnect this uh, because I don't want contaminants and rust and stuff like that getting into the old fuel pump because then you're in trouble. We'll just pretend that we knew it was good. Now up here on the sparkles, we're going to unhook the battery. We got to make sure we got 12 V's, whatever kind of V's the lightning cube is putting off back here. Is the same over here and then we got to make sure we got lightning shooting out of these guys as well I should just test the key okay these are loose so let me get the lone wolf off I'm gonna tighten up these make sure the key turns it over and then with the key forward we'll test for voltages here and then we'll start there and start just you know working our way through the whole system. All the electro digitals is tightened on the starter. Let's see what we got. There we go. Okay, well that works, that's good. Well, now that a guy's cranked on it and bound a chain up here in the belts, maybe we should check the fluids in this thing and see if we, you know, there's something in it. We got something, if there's anything in here. Blood stick on the shift machine, oh boy. Oh wow, burnt, overheated severely. Transmission shiftage percentage just went down to about 71.3. That's fine. I got something for that a little bit later. The old engine, Earl. That don't look too bad. 10.30. Hmm. It's got viscosity. No water, no antifreeze. No gas. We're good. We are good. A little bit low, but I got something for that too. Don't worry about it. Ice cube juice, well, based on I can just lift it out of the whole truck, I'm going to say that that's probably empty. You know, it's probably not. 
probably not anything in there. And uh, what else kind of juice we got? I don't know. P.S. juice, plum dry. I don't got something for that. Maybe we just throw a little bit of ATF in there. I don't know. I don't know. We got to see if this runs first. What are all the heli choppers doing out here? Good thing I ain't got my friends along. They'd be low crawling right now in the bushes. You know what I mean? Digital lightning. What do we got? Time to, you know, get through the electronics here. What do we got on the battery? 12, well quit jumping around. 12.4, that's, that's pretty good for me. I ain't kidding you, I must have had this one on boil. I know it's been in like 36 different vehicles. Okay, now I got the ignition stick rolled forward. So we're gonna take the main lead to the lightning whirler here. Plug that into there. 12.8. Three, four. That's not a lot of loss, if I'm being honest, from the lightning cube here. So that means our ground is halfway decent, and there must be still be a bond from the engine to the body. Nope, I can see it hanging right there. <laughs> we'll just pretend. You know, we're all good. Nice thing about the HEIs is you can run them all the way down to 9.56, 9.59. V's and they'll still snap some lightning around a little bit. Okay, now let me go get my light bulb thingy and we'll jump that in line. And if that blinks when we're cranking on her, then we're getting lightning and we don't even have to take the, the cap of the thing off and we know we're good. We're not dealing with points, so it's very, very, very unlikely the ignition module in here has failed, although it happens super high mileage or people replace them and don't put electro digital grease underneath of them, they cook them, they get hot. If your truck is stalling when it gets hot or your car is stalling when it gets hot and you lose spark, it's your ignition module. Feller, you just gotta grease them up, you know, before you, before you put them back in there. But anywho, I gotta walk all the way back to the back of the truck again and get my, get my blinky light. Here it is. I'm back. I mean, I took a break, kind of on city hours today, even though we should be really just getting after it. We got some AC Dalcos from about when I was born in here, it looks like. We'll just pretend for now those are fine. There we go. Light installed. Let's crank on this, see if we got any sparkles. All right now, fellers and fellettes, watch that. Let's see if we got any sparkles. Whoa. Maybe you can't even see it, but I can. We got a lightning storm like you wouldn't believe. Windshield washer cap is busted. June bugs in there. Guy just realized I don't have any sort of ownership documents. I didn't get a bill of sale from the feller and well, there ain't no LPs on the rig. So a guy ought to try to wrap this up before dark. You know what I mean? And just, we gotta get, we gotta get on the road. Doubtful very, we've got any head lips or tail lips or turn lips or any of the lips is what I'm saying. But she's bumping fuel from somewhere. Haven't even looked underneath the truck. That's fine. We got lightning storms. So, I mean, we're well on the way. I think maybe we just dump some Fire make it happen right on the app here. See if it'll bark off and make some noise. And then we can start plugging. We got a lot of plugage inage hooking up her. I guess before, you know, we throw some fire maker down it, let's go ahead and just pull one spark later. Pretend that we care. That was finger tight. Makes me feel like I'm obligated to check the rest now. Great. Oh yeah. Well, this one wasn't burning oil. She's richer than Bill Gates. Timing is wrong. You could tell by the strap. But I mean, that's fine. This is a 45 TS. It's right in the mid range of the AC Delcos. TS means tapered seat. Good plug, really good plug. Great for V8s too. Snip this back in. I guess I'll just go down the row and snug up the other ones. 
I think the guy might have been confused who was pulling this. He was starting to cut out the fuel pump and the HEI and you know all that can just stay, you know, leave it hot you can keep it hooked up. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boop. Next one. What are you gonna tell me? We got dirt dauberage level like 74 in here, by the way. Oh yep, see that one was loose too. That might be that gallopin. We might fix that right now. Nope, rings are down, at least two cylinders. But I mean, we can be optimistic. Hope and whatever. Keys on, we're in park. I mean, neutralis would work too, but. Here's the moment eight of you have been waiting for. Well, nine, but that guy, no, this guy, way too many balls. Not quite sure he understands what's going on, but let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing to bark off. Make a little bit of noise. Whew. That's way too much. Perfect. Okay, keys on. Should have sparkles. We got fire maker happener in it. Bring the thunder. Immediately. Boy, we got, it's gonna be loud. You know what I mean? Try it again, you know, gigs. Okay, I gotta do something with the fuel pump now cause it's, it's angry. It's shooting fuel. Listen, it ain't knocking. Well, we've only spun 174 RPM, but what I mean by that is she ain't bound. We ain't got a window hanging out of the thing. So, Golly, did we just hook up wherever this fuel is coming from and see what we got? Fill this fuel, make it happen or up? Maybe the needle and seat's good. We get this thing to idle for a minute. The uh, belts are about to fling off on a cord that there ain't no you know, fan or nuts or nothing holding that on, but we'll just wait on that. Hmm. Did we just make a plan? I got a rig them. You know, slightly. It normally went this way. I just put a band in her and I don't know. We get fuel. I know we got more vacuum leaks than American Airlines, but I mean, look at this stuff. Okay, well, there goes. There's that, I guess. So there's a couple more of them. But if we could just get it to fire and idle, I could start tracking these down and plugalizing them. Most of them go to temperature switches and doodabs and Schwarzeneggers and whatever. Here's what we need, fellas. We need vacuum advance to manifold vacuum. That's pretty much it. The rest of it, we're going to plug lies, pinch off, and bend. Got this taunt out of the way. This is about ready to fall off. That's fine. Should run for a minute. So let's uh, fill this puppy up and get it to fire again. See if we can get this to idle for a minute. I wonder what Dwight Yoakam's doing. He's been on a lot of radio interviews recently, it seems like. Ouch. Also, fun fact, I have a boxer's fracture in my hand. That's why it's swollen like a watermelon, but we're gonna keep just ignoring that. Got a fuel filter in here. Just gotta get a new piece of line and try to find Two clamp laters. Indoor zip ties. Have you seen those things? You just bzzz. That's tight. I ain't kidding you. What do I need? About 17 liters. And then bzzz. Over there. Where'd the lone wolf go? Oh, here it is. All right, let's see what we got. There it goes. He's missing bad, but it's running. There goes the belt. Still going. It ain't pumping fuel yet. Come on. There we go. It's airlock. Good kill. It looks nasty. I mean, 
Oh, that ain't good. We got, uh, it looks like exhaust or compression coming out of the cooling system there, so. Head gasket? Could be. Cracked block? I don't know. Cracked head? Maybe. But I could tell you that smoke coming out of the, what would go to the heater core, not good. Definitely not good. It runs on four, like I suggested it would. That's pretty neat. Uh-oh. We'll ignore that for now. Trans pump pumps, you can tell because of the way that it is. Started threading that in. Got to take this brass fitting out and get that snipped in. Maybe I could try to figure out some rad hoses. Get this back on. Got to get a fan in her. And then we could try to run it a little bit more. I got some sort of varnished fuel out of the tank. Sure. Good thing is, if the fuel is 15 years old, which it should be, I guarantee you it's stored way better than the fuel today. There's probably some octanes left in her, is what I'm saying. Let's see what we got here. Sure. You know, it's got oil. We're not going to know if a head gasket's bad or anything like that until we inject some water into the cooling system. But I'll start plugging stuff up here, see if we can get it to the point we can fire it up again and maybe rev on her a little bit. I don't know. I don't know yet. I got updates. I was going to leave all this mess on here. It took me 38 million point four months to get that compressor off. But this was wallering around when I went to hook up the heater hose here. Turns out the space later down here is missing. So guy figured, well, all these bolts are going to be the same bolts as this kind of configurations. So I took off the bracketry, swung that over there, although neat, don't need you right now. Ice cube maker machine. And borrowed one of them bolts to get this on here. This is going to leak profusely, most likely. But can it get us home? That's, you know, that's the question. The other issue I had is I had an old flex fan I've been carrying around for about four years. Space later is not right. Binds up in the old PS pump and binds up down here as well. So, I don't know, I could start taking more stuff off. I don't really need PS. Try to get that fan on here. Otherwise, I got an electro digital one over here that we can affix in here and then wire that off the lightning cube over there. But I got the transmission cooler lines in, overflow plugged in, heater core, which usually I would bypass, but two things. I don't have enough plug elators for all this stuff. I got to plug this one still. I think I got one cap for that. But this might get warm. We might need that heater core as an extra rad doing the cooling things. I'm not, I don't know yet. Bypassing this, like I said, for now. We just need the charging whirler. Got that all plugged in. I got reminded because sparks were flying by all this fuel that I spilled earlier. Zipping and zapping down there. Of course, don't unhook these when you work on anything. See? That's how you find, you know, live wires on your engine. So, you know, everything's going fine so far. Next step, rad hoses. We got a lower one. We got the uppers. And then I got to figure out some sort of digital cooling for this or physical cooling. Not quite sure. What does this take to get off? What kind of bracketry we got here? It looks like that bolt might be out already. Three, four bolts. Do it that way. Or a couple zip ties and digitals. Well, the decision's been made. I'm lazy, so I was going to go this way. But that hits the torque twister pulley down there as well. So it's a mess, basically. Ring of room. I'm going to have to try to sneak. I'm going to sneak in the digital one now while I can get my mitts down in here. See? And then, and then we'll put the hoses in. As far as wiring goes, maybe we just go direct. You know, jump out, wrap a wire around it. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what's in my tote. You ever stop and just wonder why it is you do what you do? Yeah, I mean, me either. I was just, you know, I was just seeing what 
what you were thinking. I got some nylon zippy strippy holder downers. I carry these always in the toolbox, you know. Most of my junk either doesn't have brakes or overheats, so these are handy to have around in case you got a plop of digital fans in. If this one even works, I guess I haven't tested it since 1986, but we're just gonna pretend that everything is gonna be fine. Well, for Pete's sake, can't even fit my arm in there. <sighs> 74 or more of these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, this thing is going to be really souped up by the time we're done. Does two work? I think two might work. Let's save on these. These are kind of expensive. You know what I mean? Where did I, where did I, oh, there it is. Pretty nice in here, taking a little break. Now, honestly, I just went to hook up the rad hoses and realized that, well, I ain't got no rad hoses, you know? So I did the right thing and dialed up the Uberus, this app, whatever that is. And some fella is going to drive like 49 miles to come get me. And then we're going to drive an hour and six minutes to the parts store. So I should get back by sundown. That seems, that seems fine. You know, no pressure, but here's probably the one shot to get everything a guy needs for this to work. Seems fine. Well, we just swung by the parts store, got some stuff, and then uh, it's James, right? Yeah. Yeah, James and I swung by, I got some burritos. Look at this thing, it's like four pounds. This one's a scorpion sauce. I don't know, I asked for a side of Tom's, they didn't have it. But uh, we're going to, uh, they call them party stores here. Guys gotta get some cold snacks, maybe a wobble pop, and uh, get back to work. I immediately regret the scorpions. It's hot. Well, here we are. Back at the truck. I got scorpion pepper in my left eye. Bad decision. So I did the right thing and rubbed my eyes. Now I got grease packed into my right eye. I can't see nothing. My nose is running like a scalded greyhound dog. Well, let's, you know, let's get back to it. Good news, they didn't have the hoses I need. So I did the right thing and just grabbed a bunch of flexo lights. I eyeballed them before I left, you know. Ooh, that's a scooch. Too long. Can we make it work though? That's the thing. Just needs to get us home. Oh yeah. Just clamp that on there. You have to get the bottom one in there. Did I get clamps? I don't know. I hope I did. Can't afford another trip, peppers. I must have sat this down by the field and then scooched her forward for planting because there's a big brown dirt spot behind the truck. Anywho, got the rad hoses in. Put some ice cube juice in here. See what's gonna leak. Maybe the radiator, not sure. I'm a little bit worried about the head gasket, but we can get some juice in here. Fire it up, get it idling again. We can see if the two mix late. Uh-oh, hopefully not, you know. Got to see if all the gaskets come back around, plus the water neck, and then whatever gasket holds that housing to the head. That was a really good design. Nope, not even close. Go ahead and use real ice cube juice when you're testing so you can waste it, you know, when it leaks. Actually, I'm gonna stop after this and we'll just ask if we can use the hose bib. <laughs> Should have done that first, but it's the way she goes. Original Jack's missing. Shoot. Does have Manuel brakes, by the way. I don't see a power booster up there. I'm gonna go get some water. This clamp mount thingy. I'm just, I'm over it. Well, let's fire on her again. Now we got some ice cube juice, upper and lower on, plug that off. Transmission shift machines hooked into the cooler juice thingy. Still don't have the digital electrical fans hooked up because I don't like, I don't like to do the electricities. 
you know, we'll wait. Let's just hear this thing run for a little bit before we get too carried away here. Boy, I do have vacuum leaks all over though. I could just see them with my teeth. <laughs> What is that running out there now? I think that's water. No, can't be. Maybe it is. Oh yeah, that ain't good. Yeah, I remember when we first started cranking on this rig, we got it to fire and I said, uh-oh, why do we have exhaust coming out of the cooling system? That's not good. Uh-oh, we'll ignore that for now. Well, as it turns out, we have a severe, I mean, one of the worst head gasket failures I've seen in quite some time. I wanted to be sure, so I went ahead and checked on it and here's how you can know. Watch the exhaust down there so you don't hydro lock. So yeah, she's, it's blued up, you know, gasket wise. Now, if this was my only rig, I go on the town, pick up my work truck, whatever. Yeah, we'd throw a head gasket in this thing couple hours have her back on the road but could be a cracked head could be a cracked box too i don't know the history on the rig whoever owned it obviously gave up on it blued the head gasket up and they said enough they were clearly going to put a v8 in i don't think they were going to pull it out to rebuild it or anything like that it's just a 250. you win some you lose some this is my first loss in a long time and i wouldn't even really call it a loss i knew this was a parts truck coming in It'd just be kind of neat to get it running and drive it home instead. But I folded in like a just deck of playing cards. You know what I mean? Called the wife, Oofta. She's uh, three and a half hours away, something like that, on the way with Traymore. So I'm going to start picking up tools and pieces and whatnot, get everything loaded in here. Still got to figure out a front tire. Got to get this thing on a trailer. We'll get it back home and then decide what to do with this thing. I get too emotionally attached to vehicles, I think. What I'm saying is the more I hang around this rig, the more I keep thinking, oof the may. Do we really want to take the box and the doors off of this truck and then what? This is gonna sit with a wounded engine? Or, I don't know, does a guy, I got engines. I got transmissions. Remember that 79 Camaro? The Dirt Dob Romero, that's got a good 350 in transmission. Should we blop that in this thing? I don't know. You guys bleep bloop it down there in the comments. Give me some ideas or maybe we just stick her in the tree row, you know, and get to it this winter, figure it out. But I had goals to really make that blue truck a nice truck. And I ain't paying what they want for box sides these days, I'll tell you that much, right now. $78 million later and new hoses and clamp lighters. Goodness gracious. But that's exactly why, gentlemen and gentle let's. Guy needs to hear them run for a little bit and see if them gaskets come around before you put sparkle lighters and lightning hoses and change on the Earl and filters. And we actually saved a lot of money. And that rad and those hoses, Boop. Those could come right out. Plop them in something else, and I ain't kidding you. Gonna need this feller to come around if we're gonna get it on the tray more easy. Ooh, she's pretty shot. See right through the thing. What's the over end of the under? You know, that this will air up? I don't even know what that means. But I know it has something to do with gambling, you know? But anyway, I'm gonna say it's about a well, actually, I'm going to give this an 86.9% chance. I ain't killing you. I mean, it's steel belted. It ought to come around for a minute at least. 
don't mind that I can put my hand through it. Here we go. What do we got? What's this say? Let's juice her up to, let's see if it'll go to 20 for starters before it blows my hat plane off. I don't, I don't think it's, I think my percentages were backwards. I meant whatever the difference of the number I said to 100 was the chance, which I think would be like 26.72 or something like that. No, 17, 29 there's leaders involved. Anyway, it's not airing up, is what I'm saying. Thankfully, I brought a spare, but that might be a six slug GM wheel. And this appears to be the old five on five. One, two, three, four, quattro. So, I don't know what, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Yes, yeah, hoop. Ah. Just keep jacking until you hear stuff bending, crunching. It'll eventually stop. That tire, it'll lift. Guarantee it. Where are we at? Almost there. For some reason, I brought like a 35 inch tire. Not really, but it's probably a 33. Nope, 31, but I keep it clean. But it's also a lot bigger than this one. That's okay. Boy, the Honda Maximus. Really starts a burning. NASCAR. Oh yeah. Just wait, Bobby Labonte. Perfection takes time. Whoops. Drop the lug nut. That's two minutes. Oh. Okay. Okay. A little bit of hits. Now what do you say? Oh. Okay. I just can't believe it. Well, I guess I got to though. I'm looking right at it. Ouch. Oh, for crying in the mud. I'm gonna try to use my left hand. Oh, she's had shocks in the last 20 years. And brake pads. Well. Both of them, even. There's some good parts on this rig. No, nope, not really. No, there is, there is. Springs ain't been cut yet. I can fix that. We got a 205, no, 215, 70, 15, flat on one side. I wonder what the one I brought is. Oh, it's just a 30 by 9.5. That should be fine. Yep, let me get this in here. There we go. Boy, driving home on two lug nuts would have been a little sketchy, but you know, I had a her. Well, the hood, it ain't doing hood things. It's not latchalizing. Gonna need that so she don't fold up into the windscreen on the Traymore. And I think all it is is when this kicks down, see how that's not kicking over to lock it? It's just kind of it's sticking here. I'm just gonna get some juice in there and gently try to bring this around. Rebuild, rebuild, rebuild a little more. Just a tickle. Rebuild. By the way, here's the sparkulator that was burning all the water and antifreeze. Very obvious. Okay, let's see how this works now. Seems to work fine. Oh, what in the devil? Could this be the issue? Doubtful. Oh, I guess that, <laughs> I guess that was the issue. Look at this tailgate. Goodness gracious. This is worth big money. I ain't kidding you. Really nice shape. I gotta do something with this though. For some reason I don't believe the tow capacitizes as advertised. Let me think for a minute. I'll come up with something. Well, thought about it. Quite some time, actually. I don't want this falling off on the way home. Would not be good. It's a good bumper, you know? It's just missing everything. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just throw a ratchet strap around it and that ought to, you know, permanently secure it. Oh yeah, like that. What a beautiful day. Rain this morning, you know, but 
it did clear off. Ground's a little damp. But can't complain about that when you got crops in the ground, you know. Okay, go through the hooks, double hook it. You know how to double hook? See that? See the double hooks? Okay, you're welcome. Bring it down, get it in here. Not gonna lie, that's probably never gonna come off of there. And then what do we do with this? We bring it around, bring it around, bring it through, pull. Just like roping calves, you know. Yes! Yeah! That'll stay. Boy, the shocks in the back are good. No, they're completely shot. Well, Jessica and the boys made it. How was the drive? traffic. They had to go through Nashville then all the way northwest up here. It's quite a drive actually. Bentley's cranking her up. We'll use the hinch as my boys call it. Hook on to this bad boy get her up there. And then It's pretty late in the day. We might actually uh, go get a bite to eat and do the family thing a little bit. But we'll get her home tonight. Find a good spot buddy? Is it on the frame or what'd you find? like a bar on the frame, not the steering bar, like a bar there's like a hole in the that. Okay. Bentley's gonna steer it. What do you think of this truck? I like it. You like it? Throw her down in neutral, bud. Jessica's running the hen. This kid's pretty darn good at winching up vehicles. He's done it a lot. Long bed, so we're gonna have to take her wide. Good job, buddy. Throw her up and park, would you? Oh, look at you, buddy. It's so hard to see. Without the power steerings. Hey, look at this box, though. You think this would go good on the blue truck? Or do we keep the whole truck and just make it run? Keep it. Keep it? Yeah, go ahead, bring her down. Probably less with a Lee, you know. We made her back last night and I was thinking today, we might as well just bring this right down to a shine. Let's get all this moss and mold and everything that's been accumulating for the last 15 years off of this rig and see what we really have for a body. Then we can make a final decision on, is this really a parts truck or do we just start building this one? I don't know yet. Bentley's here to help. He sure likes pressure washing, even though it, you know, blows on him a little bit. But I'm thinking this is gonna clean up pretty good, other than the hood and the roof, obviously, but we'll see what we got real quick. So this is just Don dish soap and some simple green. And we'll let this soak in. It's already starting to eat some of it. This makes it get an awful lot easier.
looking really good. However, there are some spots on here from whatever lichens, light, lichens mold stuff. It's just not coming off. So we're going to steel wool it. This is just quad zero with the soap. And look at that. It just takes all that stuff right off. So when it's nice and wet like this, I'm just going to run behind them and spit shiner with this. Plus, it'll even take off surface rust. See that? All this little rust here, gone. No big deal. Also, just an example on chrome, the guy gets into here, pops his sandals. Look at the difference. You know what I mean, fellers and fellettes. Oof da me. This thing's hotter than grandma's lefsa. And I ain't kidding you. Now I'm really torn. I don't know what to do. Yeah, we could make a couple good rigs out of this one, but it's even got a title. I don't know if I told you that. I don't know. We got that dirt dauber marrow. We've got a 350 in her with the Turbski 350 shiftomatic. Seems to run pretty good. I bet that would slip right in here too, but I'm going to honestly leave it up to you guys. Tell me what to do here. Bleep bloop it down there in the comments section. For now, I'm going to scoot it right back here and hang on to it. And I'll read through those comments and we'll come up with a plan. That's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time. <laughs>